our power of three interview series you as the consumer millie as your mortgage guy and one of our industry experts to give you the truth and come with transparency about what's going to protect you your family and your pocketbook today we got one of my buddies and someone that we refer a ton of clients to it's my buddy aubrey Kloss from national credit care aubrey how you doing man i'm doing great millie thank you good afternoon how are yeah. you i'm doing good and i really appreciate you stopping by you know, you and I talk about all the time. You've been in, net, you know, in credit restoration and helping Americans with their credit for over four years now. And you know, when you and I get a chance to get together and have some lunch or talk, I mean, the the thing that's crazy about mortgages, the mortgage industry, is it's the one major thing that I think people have to deal with in their life that is just clouded with mystery and misinformation. And the big piece of that. Is that's sitting it's inside that mortgage in that mortgage world is credit. You know the Absolutely. world that you live in, and it's it it's incredible to me how many Americans are walking around with questions and unfortunately, usually the wrong answers to those questions in regard to their credit. And basically, nowadays we're in this world where you can't cross the street without a good credit score. And I know you're helping people get there, so that's why it'd be great to take a couple minutes today. We can go over some questions. And you can answer real quick and simple with the truth what Americans need to know about their credit. Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we've done videos about it. And, you know, what the heck is a credit score? What does a credit score mean? Well, really, you know, quite simply, what your credit score means, uh, by definition, is the probability that a consumer can repay a loan. The likelihood that, that you as a consumer will be able to, to repay that loan. The higher your credit score is, the better chance you're going to pay it back. The lower your credit score is, that's why you're not going to be approved for a loan, is because you're less likely to pay it back. Yeah, and regardless of you know, you know the flaws to that system or what you and I both have a personal opinion about it, it is what it is. I mean, that's the benchmark on how banks, credit unions, mortgage guys, anyone determines whether or not you're getting that deal and for what interest rate. Absolutely. I mean, can you think of anything in anybody's life that's more decisive at this time than their credit score and how much money they're going to spend for each item? No, not at all. Not at all. Absolutely. I mean, every consumer should want to know uh, know more about credit, should want to have an appropriate credit score that they can do business with. Nobody wants to actually be denied for anything. Uh, everybody wants to have a higher credit score, an appropriate credit score. They just don't know how to go about doing it. Right. And that's where you come in. I know you've done a great job for us in the past. Here's here's a pretty basic question, but I mean, does paying your debts improve your credit? It actually doesn't, uh, and that's where you know, in, in us doing business together for so long and, and helping people get home loans and financing, refinancing things like that, um, paying your your negative debts as far as collections and things of that nature actually does not improve your credit. You don't get brownie points for doing that; it's already negative. Um, ultimately. All things considered, among other factors, uh, what truly hurts you as far as uh, decreasing your credit score is a date of last activity. So whenever you pay a collection, it doesn't come off your credit report, another misconception. It's going to be listed as a paid collection next next month, but the date of last activity is going to be renewed, therefore dropping your score. It looks like a new collection even though you paid it and it's going to be on there for another seven years. Yeah, that's yeah. a mind blower, and that's worth yeah. repeating, Aubrey, for people that yeah. are watching this interview. Absolutely. What did you what say? You Paying your collections will do what to your credit? Will drop your credit score. It's amazing. That, that's just an amazing. That's an amazing fact that, and I know I understand why that happens and how the credit scoring works, but before you start paying collections and emptying your coffer to take care of these debts. American consumer, we're talking to you. 
consult with somebody like Aubrey or Aubrey's team on how you allocate those funds, right? right absolutely, absolutely. It's not that it's not that I'm saying you don't have to pay your debts. You know, if they're your debts, you should probably own up to them. It's just a matter of when you pay them. Right. You know, you have to understand the order of operations. What do you want to achieve as a consumer first? What's your priority? Uh, you know, when working with us, the priority is typically going to be getting that home loan, getting the uh, getting the the refinance. Um, you know, let's do that first. After the fact, then you can go back and pay those collections if need be. But you can't do both at the same time. It's just the nature of credit scoring. You can't do both. Yeah. You cannot pay your negative debts and have an increased score. It doesn't work like that. And I know you've told some of our mutual clients, and I say it to consumers all the time, remember, you got to take your common sense hat off. Because yep. common sense way bye-bye to credit scoring. Yep. It's the I think ever since it was, you know, whatever since it was invented. It's the opposite, absolutely. And you said you said it, you know, very well right there. You know, whatever you think is going to help you, common sense wise with credit, is usually the opposite, and it's going to hurt you. And that's why you know every you need to make sure that you're getting the correct advice. Uh, that's what we want to offer all the time is giving the correct advice. Um, you know, rather than so many um, professionals out there uh, who think they know about credit are unfortunately giving the wrong advice and, and really making it harder for consumers to get what they want. And then and then once the mistake is made, the toothpaste is out of the tube. You know. Yep. And it's, it's important. How often should uh, you know Joe and Jane Public? I mean, there's a million ways to subscribe to this and, and keep up on your credit. But w what's your recommendation? How often should a regular consumer you know monitor their credit or keep an eye on it? Well, that's a, that's a great uh, question. I think this day and this day and age, there are so many monitoring services available through through your local bank or online uh, or even Costco. I know it offers it cheaply if you're a member there. But if you can pay for a monthly monitoring service, which is usually eight to twelve dollars a month, uh, that's ideal. That's my recommendation. If not. Yeah, you, you really typically should be looking at your credit report about every three to six months. Um, I think a year is too long. A year is too long for identity theft or fraud to happen and not know about it. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of those, like the one you were talking about with Costco, I mean, that's somewhat about, you can opt in for like streaming updates and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, yeah, it's a monthly service. It's a, they're all month to month, you know, and very affordable. You know, usually Costco, I know, is $7.50 a month. Uh, your local bank may even offer it free or for a few dollars charge. Right. Otherwise, it's, you know, 10 to 12 bucks. But, uh, you know, a monitoring, a monthly monitoring service is affordable. Uh, and credit, as we already know, is very important. It should be a priority as far as our, our monthly expenses. You know, brother, we screwed this up. We should have had. We should have talked to the Costco people before we did this. Yeah, get another, yeah, get another rep on here. You know, right. we could have gotten paid. Right. Um, why? You know, there's so many people. Whether they're coming out of the the wake of a bankruptcy, foreclosure, bad credit, or maybe you hear it a lot, especially with Gen Y. You know, they went to college, they max out a bunch of credit cards, and then they spent three years fighting their way back. You see a lot of consumers that are really leery of credit cards. Um, do you, can you take a minute and explain how important a credit card is to your credit score Absolutely. and why Absolutely. people should get one and just be responsible with one? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, credit cards, uh, otherwise known as revolving accounts, uh, are very important. Uh, you know, you know it, I know it, uh, but you know, our, our our consumers don't know it. You, you need to have at least one credit card if you want to have high credit score. Um, Fifty percent of consumers today do not have an open and active revolving account or credit card. Okay, um, the best way I can state it is. 30% of your total possible credit score of 850 is calculated solely on your on credit cards. So if you don't have a credit card, you're taking about a third or 30% of your credit score and just throwing it out the window. No access no, to it. No access to it whatsoever because you don't have one. Right. So it's about a third of your total possible credit score, straight away, not even being considered for, thrown out the window, which is why it's imperative to actually have at least one credit card uh, that's open and active. Right. And, you know, credit cards get a bad rap. I mean, they've been very vilified, especially through this credit crunch and everything that happened. But my answer to anybody that would say, well, you don't need a credit card or you shouldn't have a credit card, you know, you know did the little Spartan on the American Express card make you abuse your balance or did you? Right. right? Well, you know, that's a, that's a great point. You know, credit cards uh, are not the problem. I mean, there is not one credit card company out there that's the, that isn't trying to take as much money from you as they can. We know that. Mm -hmm. uh, management is the problem. All right. What we want to do is help consumers, educate them in, in managing their credit cards, you know, not maxing them out, uh, not getting in that hole. Um, you know, and interest rates don't matter if you don't carry a balance month to month. 
Right. You know, right, so right, with credit right. cards, we already know, uh, want to want to you know ding you for late fees and penalties and things of that nature. But at the same time, if you understand how to manage them and do that responsibly, credit cards uh, can be your best friend as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, everybody knows about triple credit score. Everybody's heard about the three credit bureaus or the credit, three credit repositories. What are credit bureaus? Well, the credit bureaus, uh, the, the three major credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, uh, are, are just simply re repositories of information. They're privately owned companies. They're not government bodies. And all they do is actually collect information that people pay them to apply to your credit report right or wrong. Okay, that's a big misunderstanding. Uh, they don't actually come up with your credit scores at all. All they do is collect the information per bureau that creditors, uh, lenders, banks, collections agencies pay them to apply to your credit report. Uh, what actually comes up with your credit scores uh, are a number of different equations in, in all the different industries that use credit scoring to calculate, or, to calculate or compute that information that the bureaus have for your Social Security number as a consumer. Yeah, okay. and you know, th those are those formulas we've talked about. I Absolutely. mean, that's why you can run into, and this leads into my next question, you can run into, and this isn't a fun conversation for me to have, I'll get a prospect that comes into my office and says, I'm an 800 borrower. Well, when we pull their credit, they're a 650. And the difference is the formula is based on whoever they're getting their other score from. Yeah, you shared with me one time, what'd you say, 35 different formulas to derive a credit score, and the mortgage <laughs> industry only uses eight? Yep. There's actually 50 plus different equations, uh, you know, throughout you know four major industries that use credit scoring. Biggest to smallest is mortgage, auto, credit card, and insurance, and fourth is the online industry. Um, you know, there are 50 plus different equations used to calculate or compute the credit bureau's information, but only eight of those are FICO approved equations that are used by the mortgage industry and actually correct. Um, so, you know, that's where you get into inflated scores from online uh, scoring systems or online credit reporting, um, which obviously doesn't work for us. Um, it is relative, but it's also inflated at the same time. Right. And just adding to that confusion, misinformation, and mystery that we were talking about in the beginning. Yeah. So, absolutely. I mean, you, you, bit, you hit the nail on the head. That was one of my questions. I mean, online credit scoring, can you trust it? Maybe not. And maybe that's something where people can consult with you. I know, like, you talked about some of the, um, the valuable monthly memberships that you can get. Um, we're obviously in the interview. We're going to leave all your contact information on this so people can reach out. Feel free to get that advice from you on Absolutely. where they should go. Because obviously every three months you don't want to go to a mortgage guy and get your credit pulled just to make no, sure everything's don't. okay. But they have to have the ability to have um, a seamless um, portal of information so they can keep up on this stuff. What is uh, What do you consider a good credit score in your industry? What do you guys normally... Well, max is an 850. Uh, the max credit score is an 850. Uh, you know, where a consumer really wants to be is above a 700. Uh, you know, with the mortgage industry, 640 is pretty much the minimum standard across the board. Um, that's going to get you a, uh, a home loan. Of course, of course, the higher your credit score is, is relative to everything you pay for. The higher your score is, the less you pay for everything. Um, where you're going to be approved for credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, uh, or home loans, whatever it is you want to be, is you know, safe is above a 700. Uh, 680 is decent, but uh, consumers should really try to be above a 700 if possible. Sure, sure. Now, this is my hot seat question I ask everybody. And, you know, obviously you have my trust and my team's trust. But how should someone go about collect, uh, selecting a credit restoration company like yourself? What That's a great question. For? That's a great question. You know, shop around, whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, but I can tell you what, rather than, um, you know, we, we, we are very confident in what we do at National Credit Care. Um, but as far as other companies, if you want to work with a local company, let's say, uh, that's absolutely fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know the three red flags to look out for for the, for the don'ts. Uh, three right. red flags. Companies that charge per trade line or per negative item. That's one negative don't. Okay. okay. Companies that have contracts of six months, 12 months, two years. Another red flag. Don't do it. Doesn't need to take that long. Right. You and I know that we work very quickly uh, simply because it doesn't need to take that long. Right. Sure. Sure. Uh, number three is ridiculous costs. If it sounds like it's too much, it's probably too much. You know, okay. 500000 $1,500, uh, it's probably too much. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the three red flags. Charging awesome. per straight line, extensive contracts, ridiculous pricing. Yeah, and what I've seen that ridiculous pricing. You and I have talked about I've had clients come in here that are struggling to pay you know, their debts down or get things realigned on their credit report. 
but I find out they're paying five or six hundred dollars to a credit restoration company. I'm like, holy smokes! <laughs> you know, you could have used that money. And then, to take what, you, care and then of what are you paying for as well? You know, what? How how detailed is their service? You know, how are they are are they you know seeking out every avenue and opportunity uh, of what of what will assist you in getting a, a score increase as quickly as possible? You know, uh, how far are they going? What's the extent of uh, of the uh, of their services? You know, so uh, you definitely want to look into it. You know, in all honesty, I don't know too many companies that actually do a good job, so it is definitely something to look into, uh, if not consulting with us. Great, great. Well, you know, Aubrey, like I said in the beginning, you're a buddy. You've always taken care of our clients. I mean, your your the feedback we've gotten from all of our clients over the over this time we've been working together has been, I mean, if it's not 100 percent, it's 99. Okay, I mean, you guys have been doing a great job at National Credit Care. The the communication's been great. We'll continue to refer to you. Now, here's my question: Would you be willing to come on and you know help the Millie Mortgage Guy Nation like maybe yes. once a month and give us like Aubrey's credit tip of the month? I mean, could you do something like that? Absolutely, I look forward to it. That'd be awesome, dude. Well, hey, Aubrey, I once again, thanks for your time. Thank you. I'll catch up with you soon. All right, take care, bud.